first things first, being a conference talk, I need a selfie, so where are we? Ah. I'm liked by someone at Swift India Group. <laughs> Fun times. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am going to be talking to you all about drawing graphs. Uh, and this is an adventure story. It is wholesome and fun, and it is about Swift UI. So to introduce myself, I'm Matt. If you need to find me on the internet, it is Matt Delves. Um, do say hello. I like to be fairly friendly and welcoming. Now, before we proceed, there is a need for a word of caution. So, everything with SwiftUI is still in beta as of the time of this talk. So, we are up to beta 4. Hopefully, on Tuesday, we will see beta 5. Now, most of the stuff I'll be talking about should be fairly stable, but it is likely to change. So, yeah, should be good. Now, with Swift UI, there is a change in paradigm from declarative, sorry, from imperative UI across to declarative. So, what we should do is we should go about and see what the difference here is. Now, one of the, a good friend by the name of Matt Gallagher writes a blog called Coco with Love, and he did an article recently about Swift UI, and he defined declarative UI as you load your handlers and their conditions into the system before starting and the system runs itself to completion. Calling your handlers in their conditions, if their conditions are met at any point. So what happens here is you just declare everything up front and then you have the system run itself and if the system hits a particular point, it will then execute parts of your code. The more common version of writing UI that we're probably all familiar with is imperative. So this is what AppKit and UIKit are at the moment. And again, Matt Gallagher describes imperative UI as you run the system to the next lifecycle checkpoint and then you read the state of the system. Looking for specific conditions, running your code if one of these conditions are discovered. So this is very different. This, so declarative UI is very much just going, I will describe the UI to you all, whereas imperative UI is more of the form of I will tell you how to construct something and stuff like that. So. As we get on with our adventure story, we will meet our hero. And in this case, our hero is Swift UI. Now, Swift UI is Apple's new framework that they introduced at WWDC this year, and it is a declarative UI framework. So it is of the form where you are describing or declaring your UI up front and letting the system go about and handle it. Now, why is this a more desirable approach, and particularly with drawing graphs and other more complex bits of UI? The reason behind this is you are not worrying about the specifics of how something is drawn on screen. You are more worrying about saying, OK, system, go about and draw yourself on the screen. So that then means that you can describe in one particular way how something will work. 
and that you then rely on the system to go, okay, for Mac OS, it will handle itself in this way. For iOS, it will do it another way. For iPad OS, again, a third. TV OS, watch OS, whatever comes down in the future, they all start to handle the intricate details. All you are doing is describing to the system how the UI should work. So a good way of thinking about this is you are telling a story about your UI. You are saying, this is how it is constructed, constructed rather than worrying about this is the details of it. So every good hero needs some friends. Now with Swift UI, there are some very common components which are used throughout any UI. These are things such as view, shape, scroll view, and geometry reader. There are a few more, but for the moment, these are the ones I would like to focus on, as these are the ones that I'm using in order to draw a graph. So these, you can sort of see it's nothing high level, like you're not dealing with a view controller, you're not dealing with a Bezier curve or anything like that. It is just some very simple building blocks that you're dealing with. So what we are going to see is how all of these building blocks fit together in order to construct a bit of UI. So let's have a look at what these particular components are doing. The first one is view, and this is the most common one you will see. So view itself is a protocol, and you are declaring a type that implements that protocol. Here, all we are saying is we have a body of text and its font is large. We are not worrying about, say, the frame of this particular view or whether it's set. We're not worrying about layout constraints or anything like that. We're just saying, hey, please go ahead and render this bit of text onto the screen. This is a very basic building block of the declarative UI pattern. Next, we have shape. So shape is slightly different. Instead of being a view, it is a, it is a shape in that it is drawing a path on the screen. Now, when dealing with shape, you are often, you need to be provided a sort of bounding box for it to go in. And that's why the function which returns the shape takes in the rect. So I will show a more complete example of this down the track, but for the moment, this is the general structure of how shape should be. Our next friend is scroll view, and this is one that we all know and love and have loved since the days of iOS 2, iPadOS 3.2, and now we've got iPadOS, what should have been 4, but it's 13, so minor details. Here, scroll view is a lot more declarative than the imperative cousin in AppKit and UIKit. Here we are saying, just lay out all of these things within a scroll view. We are saying which axis it should work on, so either vertical or horizontal, and we are saying whether it should show indicators or not. So we're not worrying about things like the content size or anything like that. We're doing away with all of the headache from UIKit and AppKit in that regard, and instead we're just saying, here's a scroll view, and we are going to lay out some things inside of it. The next one is Geometry Reader. So at Dub Dub this year, during one of the talks, we were told that pretty much the sizing sort of bubbles up from the sort of innermost through to the outermost in a lot of cases. Now, what Geometry Reader allows for is it allows us to take the parent's sizing and use it for sizing within the um, child component. 
So here what we are doing is we are just saying for this bit of text, your frame with the width, width component is equal to the width of its parent. So this is all pretty good. Those are our friends and our common components throughout. Now, every hero needs her friends. So with Swift UI, we know who the hero is, that is Swift. We know who the friends are, they are the components that come together in order to build our overall view. So let's look at how we can combine all of these different bits into a single view to use. So the most important part is the body of the graph. So this is the actual displaying of the data. And here, what we are doing is we are defining a shape. So this shape is a path and it is going over a set of points. So it starts down in one corner and then draws itself as it meanders along and sort of completes itself and fills itself in as a path. So here we are just defining the we are defining the points that that path goes along, but at this point in time we are not worrying about the fill or the stroke or any details such as that. And quite simply this is how we are building the graph or building the body of the graph. Now, the keen reader will see that there is this function display points in here. That is an implementation detail from the app I'm working on. So I decided to omit it from these slides. Simply put, this function is just returning a whole series of CG points and those points are where the sort of graph sort of goes up, it goes down and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Now that's just one part of the graph being the body. The next one is the axis. Now the axis is, or the axes are the y-axis, which is the vertical, and the x-axis, which is the horizontal. So in order to draw these, we are again relying on shape, and we are providing a path. So what we are doing here is, again, we are saying, okay, draw a line from top to bottom, and then sort of mark off all of these grooves that will end up correlating to some labels. This is pretty cool. Um, the implementation details I've just omitted from this slide as a matter of getting it all onto the one slide. The next one are the labels. So as again you'll see with the um, picture there, we are just focusing on this one point being the displaying of the text in different positions. So what we are doing here is we are describing a view. Now this view is made up of a Z stack, so just briefly, when doing layout within SwiftUI, you have three sort of stacks you can create. There's a horizontal stack being an H stack, a vertical stack being a V stack, and a pretty much an arbitrary stack being a Z stack. Here, because we are defining the positions relative to a rectangle for these bits of text, we're using a Z stack or a Z stack. How this all looks at the end is this amazing fun graph. So what we have here is we're just, just defining a vertical stack, which is in the top left we have the title, then below that we have a horizontal stack, which is everything else in the graph. We first have the uh, the y-axis being the, in this particular case, it is speed against distance, so speed on the y-axis, and then speed, uh, sorry, distance as 
you travel along, which is pretty cool. So just by using all of these very simple components, we are able to define and display a very nice and pretty looking graph. And things we can do to make this quite usable, quite interactive as well. The first of those is we can scroll the graph. So what we can do here is we know that the data along the x-axis is typically going to be larger than a window. So we just define that to a desired point and we do that using uh, frame to set the width. What we are also doing is putting that entire, um, in this case it's a V stack within an H stack, we are saying that that particular V stack component sits within the scroll view. And by putting it within a scroll view, we are then able to scroll on the horizontal axis to the different values on the ride, which is pretty cool. I like this. Our next little bit of interaction that tends to make a fair bit of sense is scaling. So what we can do is go, you know what, let's actually sort of try and drill down to a particular bit in this graph. And in order to do that, we use gestures. So gestures in Swift UI are fairly similar to those in UIKit and AppKit. And the one, one, the one we are using here is magnification gesture. This particular gesture is our pinch gesture where we are able to sort of pinch or, sorry, um, zoom out or pinch in order to change the scale of the graph. So what we are doing here is we are defining the gesture up front and we are saying, okay, we've got a binding or a state variable there. I'm not going to go into too much detail about state. Um, this talk is more about the UI components themselves. But suffice to say, it is a value that we can look at to determine whether this gesture is in effect. We then have some values coming back from the gesture when it is in the updating state. So we can tell what its state um, current state is the value, so typically goes from zero if it's sort of zoomed all the way uh, in to whatever value for its maximum magnification. We know the state of the gesture and whether it's in a transitioning state. After that, what we do is we just say, okay, for this particular view, we are adding a gesture. This is all very simple, very straightforward. No more sort of defining delegates, no more calling add gesture recognize or anything like that. We're just saying dot gesture, here is the gesture. That is all pretty cool. So after all of this, we have our graph being displayed, it can do things like scroll, and it can also do some zooming as well, which is pretty cool. I like it. So let's now look at how can we take this an extra bit further and make it more really like SwiftUI. One of the good ways of doing that is by modifying the content. So if you've played around with SwiftUI, what you will see is that after you've defined your view, you typically have functions that will do stuff like apply fill or stroke or anything like that in order to start to modify the content. So if we have our own custom view, we will then want to 
define all of these fill, stroke, and other modifiers on our custom view. And that's fairly easy. You're just defining a function that returns an instance of the view type itself. So here we're defining fill on graph. It is modifying the graph's color, and then it is returning itself. And it gets called very simply by going our graph view and then filling with pink. Pink is definitely the best color, and Pinkie Pie is the best pony. No arguments there. Now, what happens when we start to have a lot of different modifiers that we're using again and again and again? Say for everything we're doing, we're wanting to apply a fill, we're wanting to apply a stroke, we're changing the size and some other stuff. This is where a view modifier comes in. So a view modifier allows us to take our view and then apply all of these different modifications and apply them all at once. So this reduces down our um, number of calls to our view. And in order to apply a view modifier, we are just going, OK, graph view, here is your modifier, away you go. Now, with SwiftUI being very, very young, well, young in the sense of us as Apple developers, developers that write apps on Apple's platforms, we have not had much of a chance to experiment and play around with SwiftUI. So there are definitely some challenges that need to be faced. If you've done a bit of macOS development as well as UI kit development, one of the things you'll realize when doing macOS development is that the coordinate system is different from UI kit. Now, in UI kit, everything is drawn from the top left. That is 0, 0 up there. That's not true in the app kit. In app kit, everything is in the bottom left. Uh, so if you're doing any sort of path drawing, you, and previously you were trying to share all of this code, you would need to do modifications based on what platform. With Swift UI, it gets rid of the differences in that everything is a coordinate from the top left. This did trick me up when I first started. It's like, oh, I've got this code that previously worked against CG path. It should just work against path, right? Sadly not. The coordinate system is from the top right. So that is definitely one of the things you need to look out for. and. Yeah, hopefully are able to solve in your own apps. Another thing to look out for is there are just going to be subtle differences between the platforms as well. So something that you would expect to work on when the target is macOS using SwiftUI may not work the same as it is on iOS. So always make sure that you are running through your app as well as you can. If you have the luxury of writing UI tests, please do so, as they will so save you from a lot of headache down the track. OK. Some general advice. Um, what are some rules of thumb when building Swift UI views and components? With this, you want to keep everything small. So one of the things I like to do is just keep the actual definition of a view body down to as few lines as I could. A rule of thumb might be, can it fit on a presentation slide at a conference? If it can, yeah, it's probably small and it probably is small enough in order to use. That's one good thing. The other thing is, 
don't worry too much about the how something works. Just worry about describing it. Let the system take care of the how. You just tell a story to the system and say, this is how I want things to work. Okay. So thank you very much. That is all I have for today. And please do keep in touch.